I'm hoping 93% say yes, that women, that women are capable of doing every kind of work as compared to men in the society. But uh, I don't know, uh, maybe some of you can um, just take it with a pinch of salt here. Uh, when we say that women are capable of doing every kind of work as compared to men in the society, so do we or are we expecting super women here who can who are able to uh, juggle between the professional responsibilities and the home that the traditional responsibilities that are assigned to them like household uh, household activities or child rearing so men are not supposed to share those burdens with women so are we expecting super women here i'm not sure but uh, some of us might ask that question here and then once again we have this one that single mothers because our Indian traditional society is not that much uh, familiar with the idea of single mother because we are uh, believers in joint family and all this and um, women are not supposed to have a family on their or rear the children on their own. They should always have uh, male protectors with them or husbands or brothers or fathers, something like that. So whether a single woman is able to raise her child in the best possible way, once again, 82.2% say yes, they are capable. But once again, it might be a bit problematic but because the concept of motherhood that we can see in the you know, Indian society is not very favorable to the status of Indian women that we know, a lot of us know. The next question was, of course, this is the one. Do you feel that a male child gets preferential treatment as compared to a female child at home? And 71.4%, the majority of them say yes male children, they get preferential treatment as compared to the female child. So this, once again, comes to us as the reality. And then, once again, another bitter truth. Whether it is a problem for a girl to pursue institutional education after her marriage. Once again, the sad reality is 73.6% uh, of the respondents, they believe that, yes, it is a problem for a girl to pursue institutional education, higher education after her marriage. So marriage still now is a big issue in the life of a girl. It is not so uh, in the life of a boy, but in the life of a girl, it's still considered to be one. So this one, whether in pandemic days, women have faced greater hardships. And we have this uh, various, just below, alongside all this uh, statistical data we have, even here in our Google Form survey, we have 83% respondents saying that yes, during the pandemic days, women have faced greater hardships. So yes, this is the realistic data we can say. Now, this one is the most uh, worrying one that I was talking about to you all. There was a question whether uh, just respondents felt that women through their dress or behavior, etc., invite physical assault or rape on themselves. Because this is a common accusation that we hear from time to time through social media, through these uh, conversations, through these remarks from high five people also all the time. So uh, how many of them believe it to be so? And unfortunately, this is uh, how it came to us. It was a shocker that almost 50% uh, because the maybe the maybe section can also be it cannot be included in the no section at least so almost 50% of the respondents said yes women are responsible for the this uh, physical assault or rape on themselves so that was a real shocker to us we must say and uh, now if we ask because uh, yesterday a participant asked our resource person how to change this uh, scenario how to change this scene the status because everything is theorized in our uh, lecture series or webinar series everything we have as a as a theory but on the practical field how can we change it so in the practical field one of the ways to change it has been the use of law the legal recourses here when we asked our respondents that whether our laws are more in favor of women what did they think and yes 54 percent believe that these laws that our laws are more in favor of women so this is once again a big contradiction because it proves that legal courses legal recourses facilities in themselves they cannot protect the women or cannot uh, just empower the women as such. Otherwise, these uh, truths or these uh, sections, these, these pictures would not have come to us. 
so what is the real way maybe the real way comes to this one this was also the one of the first questions that whether the celebration of women's day contributes to the improvement of the women's status in society 80.5 percent said yes it contributes to the improvement of the women's status in society so ultimately we come to the same answer that our resource person gave you a study that it is the changing of mindset only we have to change our mindset we have to change our core beliefs in some way otherwise only legal recourses or uh, this uh, all all other practical solutions are not going to work unless and until we make ourselves more aware we just try a bit more to make ourselves more sensitive to these issues we change our mindset in another way so that is why once again uh, just thank you for uh, bearing with me through all these uh, slide presentations because as i told you all these responses they are vital to us very important they are the basic blocks the uh, the building blocks of this lecture series for us so that is why we are having this discussion today that is where we are we are having this uh, just analysis this uh, four or six day this uh, program so that is we we have so i hope you all have got the picture how it is how it is for all of us and why we just uh, planned for this uh, kind of a lecture series so now let us come back to the program once again and uh, let us start the program the introduction part is over for now i once again welcome you all a very good afternoon i hope you will enjoy this session as well like yesterday so shushmita now it is over to you thank you Thank you so much, Madam, for this wonderful overview of uh, the lecture series we are continuing with. So, without saying much, now I would like to invite our resource person for the day, Dr. Veena Sengar. Before before I invite her over this platform, uh, let me give a brief introduction about her. So, uh, she is an assistant professor of the Department of History. and asian indian culture faculty of social science dr baba sahib ambedkar marathwada university maharashtra she has been a fulbright fellow from uh, 2018 till 2019 at florida under fulbright nehru fellowship for academic and professional excellence she has also received numerous grants fellowships and awards some of which uh, include a uh, university travel grant for paper presentation on colonial landscape in a princely state british land policies in rural spaces of ajanta international conference uh, she has been awarded the ldc program travel grant by association of asian studies uh, she has also been awarded travel grant by sir ratan tata trust for attending to present research work on archiving rural south asian heritage uh, another travel grant to attend attend ninth european social science history conference at the university of glasgow uh, she has also been awarded the best teacher award shikshak pratibha puraskar in the year 2012 by department of mass communication and journalism aurangabad uh, she has been awarded centrally administered doctoral fellowship by Indian Council of Social Science Research from the year 2000 till 2001 she has been also awarded with junior research fellowship by Indian Council of Historical Research for 2 years uh, also been uh, she has received the KTM Hegre gold medal for scoring highest mark in MA in the faculty of arts from the university of baroda uh, she has uh more than 51 published books and articles in books monographs peer reviewed journals etc she has also a huge list of conferences co organized chaired and coordinated sessions in conferences at both national and international levels 
Madam has also got numerous memberships and professional services in her name, like the uh, founding member Rural South Asia Work Network since 2012, member uh, of Indian Society for Buddhist Studies, member Association for Asian Studies, uh, district female representative uh, since 2017, and member of Maratwada Itihas Parishad, Hingoli, Maharashtra since 2014. Uh, also to mention that Madam has a, a vast knowledge of numerous languages, which include many of the Indian and European languages like German, French, Portuguese, Italian. So uh, I think she is a perfect role model for us. We need inspiration to succeed in life and work for the betterment of society. So um, in fact, uh, this is just a small gist of her achievements. So, and uh, time and words would be insufficient to mention all your achievements, Madam, here in this platform. And we are extremely fortunate to have you with us this afternoon. So, uh, without inviting you over this platform, Madam, please take over the session. Oh, yeah. Hello, Namaskar. Yeah. Am I audible to everyone? Yes, ma'am. You are. You are. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, first of all, my uh, uh, I thank a lot to uh, the organizers of uh, this seminar of today, and uh, also the uh, week long workshop on um, um, week long workshop on, uh, on status of women in Indian society and changing mindset by Women's Cell and Prevention of Sexual Harassment Cell of Mayanagari College. Uh, I'm extremely thankful to speak on such an important topic, which is very much relevant, uh, relevant in this lockdown period, because a lot of women these days are, um, are suffering uh, multiple levels of challenges in their life in both public and private spaces. And uh, each day we get to hear one or the other news which talks about these kind of different kinds of harassments which are taking place because of the um, various pressurizing activities which take place. So I, I'll uh, like to share my PPT if it is uh, possible to. Will it be possible to do that? I yes, think. Ma'am, of course, you can share with me. Let me, yes, let me try to get it into. Uh, just a second. I think I got it somewhere. Okay, let me try it again. So, um, I'll, um, as uh, Sushmita has already introduced me and uh, Paramati has also uh, knows my background because of which I got invited. Uh, so I'm a person of history and I look into um, historical aspects uh, of different dynamics. So uh, although gender and women is not my specialization, but being a woman, uh, it is part of every woman's upbringing and uh, understanding as as well as how we um, grow ourselves as a woman in Indian society or not only in Indian, uh, a woman in anywhere in the world uh, when enters uh, the public uh, from private to public sphere, she has to undergo several challenges, even though a uh, majority of the women here be myself and including all of you. We all come from very liberal and uh, very protective kind of home. Uh, who have supported us a lot. Yet during our um, discourse, during our time, as we grow from um, uh, from home to the public sphere, we often come across different kinds of challenges. And uh, sometimes it is our shared end of common sense. Sometimes it is because of our understanding of the social order. Uh, sometimes it is also called a sixth sense of women. Uh, we try to solve uh, different kinds of uh, challenges which we come across. So, what does it Im, Im, uh, what does it uh, um, how would you say what does it imply? How we understand that how being a woman is being different, 
and what makes us different in a social schema does being a woman in private or public space does it really makes any difference and even if it uh, and if it makes a difference then why is it so why being a woman we are being treated differently and uh, or sometimes why even we are given a special privilege so these are certain questions which we have to uh, answer and often as a professional woman and also as a woman in home uh, as a homemaker also uh, each woman every woman often comes across not often like um, i would say it's every day when a woman comes across uh, where many a times in uh, even though she is very uh, intelligent she has a good professional background and she has a lot of experience yet her experience is often ignored or never been included in taking any uh, any important decision also in our life it's very fortunate that even though we had one of the first uh, prime minister of india uh, to be a woman and uh, you all uh, being from west bengal you all are very fortunate also that you have a woman leading you for past three electoral terms uh, yet how far do we respect a woman in her decision making capacities so these are some of the questions which we need to answer before we get into the um, whole context of why a woman has to reclaim or claim herself in a society to make other people or to make society realize that these are some of her requirements or these are some of her decisions which need to be respected so why does it happen um uh i think like uh, uh i'll i'll just discuss certain things and then i'll uh, make a a 20 minutes presentation and then i'll take some questions and based on that again i will try to um um have a discussion with you all will it be okay sumita a coordinator yes yes ma'am okay so uh i'm not sure why i'm not able to present my ppt just a second ha huh? window yes here so i have just uh, made a small presentation and uh, so um uh, once again thanking uh, everybody all the organizers so we are going to discuss about status of women in indian society and changing mindsets so uh, when we talk about changing mindsets we have to look into the historical being a history person i will definitely go into the history but when we talk about history we are not going to go into the very extreme amount of history because when we talk about changing mindsets we are also talking about a timeline a time from something let's say 100 years or 200 years or maybe just last 30 or 40 years how these changing mindsets has influenced the women and their status in the society and then we'll try to know that how this changing mindset has to a larger extent influenced the way women are being perceived or women are being given a certain space in the social order so uh, first thing what we uh, often see that um, now we are talking about different kinds of uh, role different kinds of status different kinds of um different kind of spaces for women so we are talking about politics and representation we are talking about land and labor we are talking about education and social transformation we are talking about kinship and marriage body and sexuality health and well-being law and justice violence and power these are different kinds of questions so uh, uh, the most important thing is that um there was there are two kinds of things so um i'll try to uh, negotiate uh, make you understand this thing this kind of a social uh, uh, is it any kind of a disruption which is happening uh, i'll just try it i hope the presentation is going well it's not a problem right okay so um let's take into context that uh, what a woman in a like what generally women were doing in uh, indian society and how this whole context of question started coming up so what we see that in our traditional uh, roles of a woman in society were pretty much uh, watertight 
like you know it was very rare uh, let's take a very simple example for example um uh 300 years ago when we look into the historical records we never see any women writing any travel log whether it was india or europe nowhere in the world uh, we find any travel log written by a woman talking about indian society or western society i'm talking about before 1900 after 1900 we often get the women travel logs because that is a time of neo liberalization so now what is happening women uh, you find ibn batuta you, you find francois bernia you find duar de bortosa or even you find very famous marco polo who comes all the way from europe and travels all over the world and then writes very interesting aspects about the uh, women uh, about the different societies of the world uh but never we found any woman all the way from europe coming to india or china and then writing about the uh, status or the culture of different world so what does it imply that it is not just india it is all over the world women were defined in certain categories of the boxes a woman had no free will a woman was not considered to be allowed to go out on her own battle her own whole life and come back safe at home again that's why we often say that there is a difference between modernity and medievalism women being independently claiming herself her identity on her own was something which was strictly no no therefore caste and religion in con in world context it was religion and class and in context of india it was caste that in these boxes only a woman was allowed to live and do her kind of chores so even a woman is going out of her home and doing some kind of work for example a lot of caste associated women were not only working in their home but they were going out in fields they were going out in uh, different kinds of activities they were going out in different kinds of uh, spaces um but it was always in the context of a caste or a class whether it was in in context of india or whether it is context of in europe um many of you must be reading about english literature or some of you might be working on indian literature as well you might have seen there are examples of women of uh, who are single but they live in a particular box of a caste or a class or a religion and there only they can uh, claim their identity their um, their um, space and their individuality and in that particular stay uh, place if something happens to them it is completely the prerogative of that particular caste or a religion to give them justice or injustice so therefore it was like a women were burned down in uh, europe in name of witch hunting same where in india women were if a woman had no husband uh, after her marriage and her husband died she was thrown for a sati system and she was burnt alive or uh, if her family was not well enough she was even uh, uh, made to go for a female infanticide so it has a lot to do the way conventional lifestyle was there now what is happening uh, with the breakdown of a certain kind of institution certain kind of institution a breakdown means look we are demographically changing the world is becoming technologically different now lot of things are not required to be done in a particular space they need more diversification of a profession and therefore a women have also started claiming their identity beyond their home states so what we find that neo liberalism and status of women brought different kinds of cushions now for example working women in public and private spaces their nature of working changed a lot uh, so it's not that like when britishers came to india all the women got justice because it was britishers also who were perpetrating a lot of atrocities on women of india or sometimes they were not uh even if they were not perpetrating any kind of injustice they were changing the nature of work which women were supposed to do uh 
and that was also the time when liberalism was happening in europe when women in europe were also questioning their roles in the society and they wanted to they not just wanted to the social system changed so fast that they had to come out because of the industrialization and lot of colonization of the entire world men were going out of their home their nation and their land and working in different parts of the world as a result women were supposed to come out of their homescapes and it was not for the well being of women alone women had to take care of their entire families and sometimes their own self also for example it was not just the world war 1 that is 1914 to 1918 but even before that europe was uh, continuously engaged in the internal continental warfare we know very well about the napoleon and the continental warfare between france and the other allied countries because of which many men died as a result a lot of women had to come out of their home and many a times women were not left with any person even if they were coming from a very well educated family or a good family yet there was nobody left in their houses to take care of them <clears throat> and that brought women to take care of their own personal self as well and this kind of change in the social pattern brought into scheme a new kind of industrialization a new kind of social system called industrialization which required women to come out in the public spaces more often and that is was the first time when women asked started asking for equal wages for example when a woman a man died it was her woman which was replaced uh, in uh, for her uh, for his work and when women went to the social um, uh, that particular company or that particular factory she told that if my husband was paid that much i should also be paid because i have equal mouths to feed back home and i am also working for 8 hours or 16 hours so you give me the same amount of salaries and that actually began with the equal wage labor and then similarly there were different kinds of working pattern as well so you know uh, the status of women and women becoming more professionally self reliant and equally contributing in the working system so it was the breakdown of the social institutions because of the changing demography because of the changing technology we have to very importantly understand that a uh, uh, a woman a status of a woman has a lot to do with the way society changes so if a woman, if a society is more education oriented more profession oriented then it is defining that a woman has to take care of the various kinds of she has to be there in the uh, garden for example um, in the very even in 21st century what is happening in afghanistan where uh, a lot of looting is taking place a lot of chaos is there in the society and which is forcing women not to come out of it or what is happening in isis 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 kind of uh, they are trying to impose a fundamentalist system of governance which doesn't goes with the global order of the making or professionalism so women are always there if we say about education women are going to go for in profession and that will change the perception that will change the way women has to come out and work for the social order so when i'm talking about uh, that neo liberalization has a lot to do because then when women started coming uh, in the social order when women started coming in the uh, social sphere public sphere they needed more a uh, Uh, representation also uh, for example uh, i'll give you a simple example of world war when world war was happening in europe uh, so a lot of men died so women between 14 to it, uh, 70s like women between 14 years to 74 years a lot of women of this age group were the only workforce left uh, to do all kinds of work whether it was land whether it was politics whether it was education whether it was social justice whether it was even uh, the um, uh, different kinds of um, uh, well being uh, we know about florence nightingale who was a very famous nurse at that time so a uh, woman were required in in fact women were even doing uh, the um, uh, backhand uh, work of the war so tele uh, teleportation teleprinting uh, messaging all these kinds of work which were done by the women and at that particular time in fact there was a time 
it was believed that between 1920 to 1940 it was predominantly women which were working in the back door uh, platforms of the entire uh, war the entire production and uh, the dissemination of the acts was done by women the same thing was actually also going on in india as well so even though a lot of women were not engaged in the public sphere at that time in india but still a significant number of women were now engaged because that was also the time when women got education and they were in a position to contribute for the well being of the society so now the question comes that when we need so many women who need to be educated then why we are not in a position to give them a equitable status why is such question i was just taking screenshot of what uh, dr parimata was uh, uh, looking into that do you think that women status is gradually improving in the society now the question comes uh, the question has to say that when we say about women status actually the question has to come as whether the status of the overall population it has nothing to do with only men and women just imagine 100 years ago how many men in the society were actually working as engineers or as doctors or as professionals 100 years ago in india 80% of the men were either working as the soldiers or they were working as the farmers so this is the integral question of the entire social status which has changed completely in the last so many years in last 100 years we have completely changed the social framework of our society and it is not because we want to change it or it it is requirement when demographically we are uh, 200 years ago we were hardly 1 billion on this earth today we are 8 billion on this earth can our earth can sustain all these 8 billion people just on the agriculture and different kinds of works no we have to multiply we have to diversify the professions we have to diverse uh, you must have heard about brain um, um uh, we, you call it as um, uh, link technology so like for one task only we are dependent on so many things to do get it complete because this is not this is known as blockchain technology and in this block technical technology everybody of us are getting our bread because this is the way the human system has to function and to work in a blockchain technology we cannot make a only men to know some educational pattern or only men to know certain kinds of technology and women not to know anything if this will happen then half of the world will collapse and world will not be in a position to work imagine if you live in a house where um, only a man knows how to operate a mobile phone and none of our daughters or women in the family know how to function in a mobile phone do you think such a kind of family can function so these are the essential questions so when we talk about women status is gradually improving it has just not to say, uh, is not is it's just not about women status it is equitably men status has also improved a man who was only doing loitering and doing nothing is now actually engaged in a productive work and same way a woman has to contribute not only in different kinds of uh, spheres she is not just traditional nurse teacher or a traditional uh, homemaker uh, like there are many more diversified she is a biotechnologist she is a pharmacist she is a chemist she is an uh, she is a um, uh, computer programmer she is a web developer so these different kinds of professions even women are taking because these all professions require a certain level of cognitive skills which has nothing to do with men and a woman it has to do with certain kinds of our psychological skills some men are good in art uh, some men are good in maths and some men are very good in arts same way some women are good in cooking and some women are really good in web development so this has nothing to do with and also scientifically and biologically it is proven that the cognitive the gray matter of men and a woman has nothing to do um with uh, the um, male or a female 
the mind functions in its own capacity and this has to do something with iq for example if i want to become an artist i don't need a very high iq but i need a really good eq and sq i need a good emotional and spiritual question to become a good artist at the same time if i want to become a good web developer or a good computer scientist i need a good iq or a good application aptitude in uh, mathematics so that has nothing to do that uh, i remember when i was in a school or when i was in college uh, there were 10 topper students who were really good in mathematics out of which eight of the women were uh, eight of the girls who were doing really good in maths were women or girls of my class so how you differentiate so you know these are certain uh, problems because even though some of us have in fact all of us have now entered in a society which requires equitable participation from all genders men women or any kind of gender but still in our backlog of mind we live in this kind of a system we still believe that caste and the religion are determinant to way a man or woman has to behave because you know it is just 200 years ago or just 100 years ago we were tied up in this kind of environment and we believe we had a faith that only this is the solution or this is only the way of life but imagine 1000 or 4000 years ago when man was a hunter or gatherer and a stone age man could we have believed that a man can live such kind of a social society where there will be caste and religion so you know every there is a very strong connection between society social order and technology as the human technology evolves the nature of man woman relationship as well as the social institutions also change and now we are living in a 21st century where the questions of society and the questions of and answers to it or solutions to it in our society are also different and therefore what percent percentage of men do you think support women to achieve their career goals this uh, actually you know this is a very male centric question why um, why men do you think support women to achieve i think like um, we have to understand i have a brother and uh, when he was doing his graduation or like he was preparing for his for his entrance it was my eldest sister who is really a very genius in mathematics she used to teach him mathematics so you know it's like it's the intelligence it's the ability it's the potentiality of a professional who can make you another professional so you know a man cannot support a woman in fact or a woman cannot support a woman it has nothing to do it's about whether you can do it or not first thing you should be sure about that whether you want to become a artist whether you want to become a dramatist or whether you just want to become nothing and that will decide your status in the society i have seen we all have seen rather some of the worst failures in marital or even in single life because they didn't know what they wanted to do and because of which they not uh, and such kind of toxic people only make such kind of mindset you know because they fail not only themselves but they also fail another successful person by marrying them and making them not to work or pulling them back into a dungeon where they themselves are living so you know such kind of mentality is coming because we are not working as per the requirements of the changing society and changing technological systems of the world so um i'm just trying to answer these questions with the context of historical understanding um so um, again uh, i'm coming back to this whole thing that you know um the, now the whole context of working has changed you know now even if you are a um, let's say even if you are a soldier like you we know that now in different system of india there are thousands of women who are working in the back front as well as in the active fields as well so uh, women because the methodology of working in the society has changed a lot a lot of work which we found was very hazardous to do in the earlier times is now been done a lot of through the uh, assistance or to the um support of the mechanization so i don't think there is any work today which requires any kind of huge mental labor except you if you want to become a wwf fighter 
but then also you have women working in them as well so you know uh, the whole context of the it is about that what kind of professions we are having in the society nowadays you don't find very gender discriminatory uh, professions in the world at all because uh, if there is a gender um, uh, categorization in the professions anywhere in the world there are also their gender faction so if you have a, a wwf male fight you have female fight or maybe they may come as a gender neutral uh, uh, professions as well so you know uh, um, uh, these are the uh, changing scenario this is the way social order is changing and perhaps it is also changing because we are becoming more diversified we are becoming more uh, adapt to the new social institutionalization of the world again uh, the problem of uh, institutional education for a uh, it is again happening because you know we are still maintaining a kind of a marital institution which is not conducive to the changing nature of in social and the economical institution of the world for example nowadays um, uh, we have an institution i don't know how many of the men today want to marry a completely homemaker girl if they want to marry it's very good if a girl wants to become a homemaker it's her choice but the question is like um nowadays you don't require your institutional marriage to be so watertight that you cannot be mobile or you cannot move out you cannot maintain it even while being mobile in your uh, work for example if men and women like uh, a husband and a wife both are working in such consideration uh, then um, in such a context then how we understand that um, man and woman are going to maintain their relationship in that matter uh, will um, it will be the responsibility of the, only the woman to maintain the household or it will be the equitable share being shared by both man and a woman so you know it is because even though a man uh, portrays himself as a uh, institutionally changed or um, technologically changed at home he fails to cope up with the kind of the institution which he has learned to adapt to so uh, these are these kind of responses only happen because we continue to remain in this problematic or we continue to remain in this kind of a jaded framework we don't want to come out of it i'm not saying that we should get away from all these kinds of institution but you know uh, for example when man was a caveman and we were doing uh, tools we did not continue the same kind of stone age tools when we got the got into the iron age era or when we got into the uh, today's era we did not continue to um, um, wear the same kind of clothes we are not uh, wearing same kinds of animal uh, hide skins we have changed into different kinds of fabrics similarly you have to get away sir certain kind of institutions or certain kind of um, blocking technologies which doesn't suits to your changing environments so uh, this is uh, these are certain questions so of course this is something very absurd like how can now when we are looking we are living in a mobile technology where everything is accessible to everybody if a woman can incite anything kind of a behavior by doing this i i suppose this uh, and like um, 40 uh, 38 percent people uh, gave answers to this this shows that how much corrupted the mindset is because you know uh, imagine 100 years ago when women were not even able to see man other than their husband and uh, brother and father has the women potential or the women perception has changed to men no or even if it has changed has it become invasive no so how can a man's way of thinking can change i think these all things are more into the patri uh, into the more conventional mindset i won't even say patriarchal i would rather say it's conventional you know you don't want to come out from a certain kinds of a, a static mindset that's why you uh, some people are still believing in that kind of thing mm, so we have to really change our thought process we have to accept the change you have to accept the 
technological aspects of the social institutions which bring things on and this is all because of that when you say that women favors a law favors women it's only because we believe that these are the conventional way because we still believe that it is caste and the religion which determine how a woman has to behave so these all are the limitations of our social uh, working and uh, i will just uh, so um, I, I come back to this. Um, um, so, you know, uh, the more important thing is that the, the, the more global our perception is, the more rigid we will be. Uh, therefore, it is say, said that uh, when you travel, you explore and you open up your mindset. The same thing goes with uh, the human or man, woman or any. I think like now we all are talking about even the different genders. So we have to be respectful of that. And we have to understand that third gender has been living in this earth. Uh, we know that who was Shikhandi. He was a third gender person and he was there in our culture almost 10,000 years ago, if you go as per the mythological convention of Mahabharata. So that means the third gender was equally respected. And we know what are the complexities of a third gender. Are. Yet they were part of a social order. So we have to be fairly respectful and it was, it, we have to be respectful of our society, you know, and our social institutions, which we keep on changing, then only we can change the mindset of our society. So thank you uh, for patient, being patient listeners. I hope I could share uh, some of my thoughts, um, which are, uh, which are as per the, um, as per the, what we could say, the thematic content of the week-long workshop. Thanks a lot for giving me. And if you have any questions, please ask. Thank you so much, madam. Uh, it was really a wonderful ma I don't, ma informative session. Uh, uh, just, uh, just a minute, dear participants. Uh, so uh, I uh, really think that uh, all the participants uh, could uh, get uh, wonderful information from your talk and they could evoke some of the ideas they had in their minds. So now I would request uh, the participants if they have any questions so that they can ask you. Ma'am, please. Ma'am, if they, uh, ma'am, good, good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Ma'am, why should the government should not be prepared a special courts for women, uh, special courts of women, ma'am? Like I'm in, uh, okay, ma'am, uh, uh, when uh, there should be a lot of differences from the wages and as well as in social, uh, social, sociality also, ma'am, in uh, in our mm -hmm. country. So on that time, we, why the government should not be taken from a special amendment from uh, uh, women's uh, like uh, justice uh, courts as Actually, well as you know, uh, yeah, 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 a very good question, uh, Mr. Ba. What's your name? Deepak Morgan, ma'am. Yeah, Deepak Morgan. Actually, if you know, in fundamental right, we have the uh, the uh, found uh, the fundamental rights of in uh, our constitution. In that, we have the right to equality, and the right to equality also talks about equal wages. So, constitutionally, we are protected, but it is socially, which is the, what happens uh, in society. People are still, you know, they are not. As I told you, know, even though society has changed. A lot of uh, institutions have changed. Everything has changed in the world. But you know, still some people live in 200 years ago. They still yes. believe that they are living in 200 years old society. It's like, you know, even though we got the Iron Age, but this uh, people, some people still live in uh, Stone Age. They don't know that Iron Age has come. <laughs> so they, they continue to live in the Stone Age. The same thing goes with a kind of people, you know. Even though they are living in 21st century, where we have constitutional rights and they know that how uh, how vigilant the system is. Because if somebody does a complaint against such a kind of a person, because now digital complaining is not a very big thing. If somebody can digitally complain against such a person who is not giving you an equal wage and directly go to the um, government of India's uh, lowest court, lower divisional court, if you just go to the lower session court and file a uh, PIL against such a kind of an act, you will be jailed or you will be under interim uh, kind of a system. But, you know, people ignore it. Like so long as something doesn't become too much of a terrible, 
I'm talking about in a very practical sense. What usually in a practical manner happens, like we bear a certain kind of exploitation till it is negligible, you know, till it doesn't goes above the head. Uh, uh, but if it goes above the head, then we act against it. So, equal way, fundamental right, and we have to accept it, and we should respect it. But you know, there are disorders, and we are just ignoring them. Although they shouldn't be, so these kinds of acts should be activated. You know, a lot of things goes as a conscious citizen. Also, the more conscious citizen we are, the better society will become. We should be very much. We should be accounting. We should also be doing our fundamental duties, but we should also be doing our, as stated as in directive principles of our constitution, that we have certain duties. Also, we should also be equally responsible for our. Uh, protection of our fundamental rights as well. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for clarifying my doubt, ma'am. I am from Andhra, ma'am. The Ajay Sarkar is student. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Any other question? Ma'am, uh, I think uh, it uh, starts from our home. Uh, why don't uh, the parents um, say their sons to uh, sit uh, at home at night so that the girls can go out uh, so easily and do their works uh, and whatever they are going out for? Uh, if uh, the boys will uh, at home, uh, the girls will uh, stay at the road. Uh, yeah, actually, you know, a lot of things, you know, uh, sometimes, you, uh, as I told, like, you know, uh, even though the world has changed a lot, but still some of us are living in 200 year old society. So uh, sometimes, you know, uh, you have, uh, you know, a lot of things look good in books. But when you see them in practical life, you have to solve them with your own common sense and your own presence of mind so sometimes uh, even we grew up in like i grew up in a family where we were three daughters and one brother was there but uh, one thing was good about uh, my parents was that like if they were strict about uh, we girls not going out they were also strict about my brother because they knew that whoever roams without any purpose outside the home in the night is going to be a rowdy nonsensical person so only nonsense and um, um, bad people or um, those who really don't have any good thing to do, only they roam outside home if they don't have any work, irrespective of being man or a woman. So, you know, uh, certain things has to be there in the society itself, uh, in the home itself. Like um, uh, if uh, a man is allowed to roam in the night, so... Uh, of course, parents have to be vigilant about them. Uh, there is no need for a man or a woman both to roam unnecessarily outside the home. Uh, these are certain kinds of value systems which we teach ourselves uh, through our upbringing. Um, and a lot of things need to be uh, discussed with. So it's very important that we should, uh, because you know, our parents also come from a kind of a mindset. Uh, so uh, some uh, everything can be solved with a good mindset and an approachable thought discourse. If we will discuss with our parents nicely, um, I won't say like being a, a good daughter, I would never say that like you should start fighting with your parents. But there is always a way to express yourself. There is always a way to negotiate things and tell them uh, properly. Uh, on a practical front, you know, uh, some things look very good in in book language, like you can protest, you become a rebel. Of course, at teenage, everybody is a rebel. But after a certain age, it's always important to have a discourse, have a discussion with your parents. Try to convince them and try to understand their point of view also. Because uh, a lot of uh, system cannot be changed overnight. It has to be pursued gradually. And uh, a lot of change, uh, and change begins from home, definitely. Um, for example, my father wanted to me become a teacher. Only. He said, no, you become a school teacher. Why you don't want to go and do PhD? So I really have to convince him. I said, look, I can do it. I will be like 
you can see everything whatever i am doing so you know you have to convince your parents you have to prove yourself and proving your uh, potentiality your capability your intelligence uh, your emotional uh, um, strength doesn't comes overnight you have to prove yourself that yes you can do it only then your parents will get convinced you know like out of 100% 99% fortunately in india still good parents and we have to convince them that this, this things can be solved i won't say like there are certain problems um, there are certain over social issues some in some social areas people have problems but then uh, solving their problems come at the next stage that is a social issue that there the government intervention comes but majority of us um, middle class families upper middle class family even lower middle class families we have a very strong family institutions which changes itself as as the change in the technology you know for example 100 years ago majority of the women were married at the before the age of 16 but now parents have become really supportive and not only girls even boys were married at the age of 12 but now all of the uh, society has changed it has absorbed things and um majority of us don't like we are given a choice to marry as our suitability so uh, because majority of the lower middle class middle class and upper middle class this kind of a section in the society always changes itself as the changing in changing technology and social institutions of the global society it's not just about nation it's a global society with changes and because of which even a family unit also changes its value systems all right yes ma'am okay. how changing mindset influence on empowerment very much changing mindset is actually has to you know um um it may sound very theoretical but it is a proven fact technology social institution and social empowerment go all together if you if you when the technology changes social institution have to change themselves accordingly and if you if your society is not changing itself as per the social uh, changing technology and social institutions of the global society your society will remain disempowered that's why it is always said that whenever a change in the society happens education is a must so if in you village, change, yeah please go ahead in village levels many of the people have so many talents madam yeah but you but know what happens it is there, on, yeah it is only because there is no correlation between educational inputs and the changes you know because we are not bringing change to the rural societies and same goes with the tribal societies also we don't uh, you know disseminate the change equitably and therefore one society remains empowered disempowered and then it becomes the um, then it becomes exploited also and it becomes liability also yes, so there yeah please tribal, go ahead tribal communities are extended madam exactly because, you know they remain one of the most disempowered communities because we look the choice to get known uh, to know the changes happening in the global society in empowerment system is in their hands like it is our social responsibility if we are becoming their uh, their neighbors then it is our responsibility to uh, us to give them equitable methods otherwise they will be they will fall prey to the predators you know because crime and crime uh, look no matter how empowered how strong your society is if your society is no society is um, free of crime so it is the good part of the society which is responsible to curtail that crime and it can only happen with good education and strong social institutions if we will have strong social institution and good education crime will remain low if it will not then crime will go high and this crime actually exploits both the parts this crime uh, this crime potent group of the society the one which roams in necessarily in the night you know that only later on becomes the I'm, i may be prejudiced or i may be generalizing but majority of the things happen from there you know those who are unnecessarily roaming in the society without any purpose and then they are ending up in different kinds of 
uh, negative activities they tend to exploit both the wings they tend to exploit empowered social institutions also and disempowered social institutions also so it is very important that the social institution of disempowered and empowered should come together and solve the problems and this will only come when there will be bridge in the technology if you will not create a bridge in the technology this disempowered will continue and for that uh, there is a very good saying na if a person of if 10 people are running out of which three are very strong and seven are very weak then it is not us building up a society it is building us race so when you that's why when three people are strong and seven people are weak it is important to create a blockchain then you create a chain and then you all run together then everybody runs together and then everybody reaches the destination in time and with equity so society is for equity and that will only happen when we will disseminate the technology and its social outcomes that is empowerment with a sharing method so the more we share, the more society will grow and the more society will become balanced and free of all kind of exploitation i won't say free but at least we will reduce the degree of exploitation and crime because yeah otherwise if we'll allow crime to grow then it will eat up everybody That's irrespective of how powerful you are <laughs> Ethics are strongly influenced to decrease the crime. Ethics and values. Exactly. Uh, I think I'm able to. I lost you somewhere. Curriculum. Haha. Uh -huh. And uh, there is no chance for ethics in human research. They are focusing on the main subjects only. So many of them are not awareness. Yeah, you know, uh, a lot of things. That's why you need you need to update your uh, information. that's why i always give you a simple example of rna technology and stone age technology you know if you will not keep on updating your technology and now technology since last 100 years technology is growing very fast so if you will not keep up with the technology then what will happen it's like living in two different era one is living in stone age and another living is in another one is living in uh rna so you have to be that's why curriculum should also be updated every year it should be now every year we get new version of um, windows or new version of new programs or web developments then why we are still stuck up in our curriculum which is 50 years old why we are not changing we are improving on our curriculum that's very important therefore curriculum should be constantly updated with a rigorous a uh, discussion with different components of the society or different representatives of the society it's very much needed otherwise we will be having a huge gap in our social and intercultural understanding i think i have done quite a lot <laughs> it's already a session time is up well, thank you thank you thank you very much thank you thank you If you have any question, you can take it from. Uh, you can always uh, ask yeah. me through different platforms. Uh, thank you so much, madam, for uh, uh, wonderfully handling this question and answer session. Thanks, so uh, I would, I would request the participants if they have any more questions. Uh, we have already given our email IDs. Uh, we have sent uh, it to mail, so they have their, uh, uh, they have our institution's email ID. Uh, so they can uh, put up their question they can raise their questions uh, there uh, through email id and we can forward it to uh, our resource persons and uh, they will get their responses uh, uh, through it so i think uh, we should uh, end up the question and session here and now i would like to uh, invite uh, dr uh, uh, i would like to invite uh, shrimati uh, sudeshna basu uh, she is uh, uh the teacher uh, of our college uh, of uh, in the subject uh, history and uh, uh, she will be presenting the valedictory session for this evening i would like to invite uh, shrimati sudeshna basu please uh, kindly take over the platform hello hello is it am i audible yes yes sudeshna ji yes oh, okay thank you on the behalf of the organizing organizing committee of this lecture series 
discuss i would like to express my heartfelt thanks to bira sengar madam during this challenging time you have accepted our invitation and you have shared your valuable thoughts with all of us today on the status of women in the society in this lecture series the issue to hand is wonderfully presented by you which has fulfilled our expectations i also want to thank all the fellow participants our dear colleagues and students who have managed their time for this program and are here today to participate in this discussion without you this program could not have been successful now with this i announce the end of the session take care everyone stay home stay safe thank you thank you sudeshnadi uh, a short announcement for uh, dear participants uh, many of you are asking for the feedback links so i would like to announce here that uh, two weeks at the end of the lecture series that is on the 6th so you will be getting the feedback link on uh, 6th of uh, june and you can fill it and receive your uh, uh, e certificates uh, thank you so much uh, everyone for uh, being with us